Hello everyone, this is Pragya Shrastava, an educator on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning app where you'll find my minimal courses. And do rate, review and share my lessons. Your reviews means a lot to me, keeps me motivated to deliver you more. And in this lesson, we'll try to understand the meaning of bearing capacity of a soil mass. Let's consider a shallow foundation. Shallow foundation, which is normally provided when soil has sufficient strength within a short depth below ground level. And moreover, the condition that is also necessary uh, is that it has got sufficient plan area to transfer the heavy loads to the base soil. Now, a shallow foundation is basically designed on the basis of safe bearing capacity of soil. This safe bearing capacity is provided by your geotechnical experts. Let's try to understand what we mean by saying the term bearing capacity. If it is a grass bearing capacity, let's see what does it mean. Suppose this is your footing on which a load is actually acting at here, load Q. And this is your plain concrete pedestal type footing with the depth DC and the total depth of footing is actually DF. This is your column, you can see here, this is a column resting on your footing soil is retained here and what we see that because of this action force or normal reaction will act from the soil on the footing. This normal reaction is actually your bearing capacity which is normally assumed to be constant over your footing. Now if you are talking about Gross bearing capacity, gross bearing capacity is actually the total safe bearing pressure just below the footing. And what you see here, this gross bearing capacity will be equal to what? It is going to balance the total load coming from upward direction. So what are the forces that may be coming? Uh, here on your soil mass, the first one, the load of the superstructure that this is the load that may be acting, this Q. Then the load of this footing and the load of this soil which is actually retained here. So the total gross bearing capacity is actually equal to the load of superstructure plus self weight of footing plus weight of earth lying above. So you get gross bearing capacity Qg is actually equal to total load Q acting over the area A, Q upon A, the total load of superstructure. Then DC gamma C multiplied by A acting over an area A. What is DC? DC is depth of this concrete footing. Gamma C is suppose the unit weight of the concrete. And the weight of earth lying above. Suppose it has got a uh, unit weight of gamma. So the depth of the soil lying above is nothing but DF minus dc so we get this term df minus dc gamma a acting over a area of a now if you are saying net bearing capacity net bearing capacity is nothing but q gross minus pressure due to overburden soil what is the pressure due to overburden soil this is gamma df 
this is going to be your if you my, uh, subtract q gross minus gamma df this is going to give you the net bearing capacity of the soil and by putting the value this is q gross minus gamma df now putting the value of q gross what you get q net is actually equal to q by a dc gamma c a upon a minus df minus dc gamma a upon a minus gamma df the overburden pressure subtract these and this whole term will get reduced to this one that means q n is equal to q upon a plus gamma c minus gamma dc and what you see that if dc depth of the concrete footing is actually very small at times um, compared to the depth of the footing so in that case we can neglect this term also so you in that uh, case actually q net becomes equal to q upon a only and for safe design what we do we do not take this net bearing capacity as a whole and design it on the basis of it no for safe design the net bearing capacity or net footing pressure should always be less than equal to q n a q what is q n a net allowable bearing capacity we must note that q n is always less than equal to q n a now let's see what does we mean by saying net allowable bearing capacity or can be written as net allowable bearing pressure because what we see that net bearing pressure which can be used for design must be must uh, give due consideration to shear failure and settlement of foundation because we have not considered these two while calculating our q net q allowable actually net allowable bearing capacity considers these two as well so what we see that q net allowable is actually smaller of these two q n s or q n p smaller of these two is taken as net allowable bearing capacity and what is q n s q n s is the net safe bearing capacity what is qnp qnp is net safe settlement pressure the minimum of the two is taken as net allowable and must be com compared with this net net bearing capacity before starting any designing work now let's see what is net safe settlement pressure qnp it is the net pressure that the soil can carry without exceeding allowable settlement the settlement normally varies allowable settlement of uh, individual footing normally varies between 25 mm to 40 mm and net safe bearing capacity qns it is the net soil pressure which can be safely applied to the soil considering only shear failure this takes care of the total allowable settlement and net safe bearing capacity takes care of the net safe shear failure so you have qns is actually qnu upon f what is f f is the factor of safety normally taken as 3.0 and qnu is your net ultimate bearing capacity net ultimate bearing capacity is the net increase in pressure at the base of the foundation that causes shear failure of the soil so we have the net ultimate bearing capacity is actually equal to ultimate bearing capacity minus gamma df now what is this let's see the 
ultimate bearing capacity. What does it mean? Ultimate bearing capacity is the gross pressure in on the base of the foundation at which the soil fails in shear. So, we have been actually discussing about this case. This was the case where there was uh, the footing was actually backfilled with soil in these areas. Now, let us take up the case when there is no backfilling in your foundation. That means this is your columns resting on your footing. This is again one column resting on footing. This is your concrete bed. These are the columns and it is actually designed in case of for a basement. So, if this is a basement meant for parking your cars or anything like that, that means the soil is actually not retained here. Now, let us try to find out the total bearing capacity, gross bearing capacity and net bearing capacity in this case. Q gross is actually here it is actually equal to the total load q acting over a area a plus dc gamma c the weight of uh, the concrete pad sorry the dc gamma c is the this one dc is the depth of your concrete bed uh, footing and gamma c is the unit weight of the concrete and Tf gamma C is this one, the weight because of the concrete bed of thickness Tf. So, the total load that is actually coming over the soil because of which the reaction forces comes from beneath will carry this one. Now, let us see what is the Q net. Q net is actually equal to Q gross minus over burden pressure. Overburden pressure is nothing but gamma df. This is your df. So, putting the values of Q gross here and subtracting what you will see. Qn is actually equal to Q upon A minus gamma df. Why? Because we can neglect these two terms. Tf and dc actually these two are actually comparatively very small in comparison to this df, the depth of the footing. So, these two can be neglected. Otherwise, you can also take care of it. Otherwise, uh, qn is actually equal to q upon a minus gamma df. And what we see that q ultimate is always less than equal to q and a. That means Q net allowable. This is Q ultimate. Putting the value here, what we see Q upon A minus gamma DF, this is what we obtained just now is less than equal to Q net allowable. Now, what you see that take QA is actually less than equal to Q net allowable plus gamma DF. This gives what? If Q by A is actually equal to gamma DF, what you will get that Q net allowable comes out to be equal to 0. That means what? If pressure applied is actually equal to pressure released, in that case the net allowable, net footing pressure is coming out to be equal to 0. That means what does this imply? that the load carrying capacity of a foundation is considerably mm, increased if it is not backfilled. So, please go through it, go through this all this portion, understand the terms because mm, you will get questions from this portion and it is actually very easy to solve if you understand it properly. Very slight difference between these terms. Go through it and keep studying.